his his like first statement to us as students was i'm not here to teach you physics i'm here to teach you how to think critically and how to learn physics you know stuck with me throughout engineering school and i think it served me well too it's it's the ability to think critically and to learn on your own is what I think sets us apart as engineers and being really problem solvers. Uh, my name's Hunter. Uh, I'm actually a part-time freelance developer. Hi, my name is Morton. Uh, I work as a full-time developer. I also have a background in engineering, uh, in this case civil engineering. Always have an interest in development, but it's sort of over time grew from just a tool to like a full-time thing now. Um, so I've really enjoyed it. I've been fortunate enough to sort of turn my hobby into my full-time job. How much of your daily workload is development focused? Most of it. Um, so I, I'm a development lead, so it comes with both like some management responsibilities. I'm working with a broader team, so a lot of design reviews, like API design reviews that, that I have to do. Uh, but anything beyond that, um, I sit and code as well, or do code reviews, or... As far as professionally, while I'm at work, mm, it's actually like 20% is what my objectives say. So we have a ton of data that we've acquired over the past decade, and we're not doing anything with it. So we've got some stuff in Azure, so we are using that Microsoft Cloud technology. We're starting the process of like getting our data to a point where it can be used by the rest of the company. How did you get interested uh, in development coming from engineering? Well, I, I've always been interested. Ever since I was a kid, I had little computers and write a little bit of apps, but it was always, it was kind of just a hobby. And I think when I started doing civil engineering, we started dealing with so much data and math and had to repeat the same thing. It quickly became a tool um, to, to basically solve some of the problems we're dealing with. Um, so over time, it just became more and more of that. My first job coming out of out of this, we I was dealing with buildings of data points, um, and over time, started building a lot of um, also some websites for our customers for dealing with a lot of their um, geospatial data, like with sort of different kinds of maps. And it just kind of grew into this whole side project where I had my little open source project, uh, building like some some various mapping websites and stuff like that, and had a lot of fun with and. Until the point where I was like, maybe I should do this full time and I apply for a new job or I was fortunate enough to be able to have been doing this full time and done it ever since. It really was born out of like a curiosity. It's so like I got really into playing guitar and piano and then I bought my first MacBook Pro. Um, and then with the MacBook Pro, I got Logic Pro with it. And so I started making music uh, digitally. And then I got really into how the software was made. At the time, I actually had a buddy of mine that was an electrical engineer. And so he was all into, you know, programming stuff with Python and creating little Android apps for himself and stuff like that. So uh, it started out as a hobby, just re really me getting interested in trying to kind of uh, expand my toolbox, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and then then it, it grew into more of a like I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning to to go through Udemy courses and uh, my wife was making fun of me for <laughs> spending so much time at a computer and then from there like I built that into a, a small freelance business where I'm able to help local businesses around uh, Memphis Tennessee kind of build their online presence uh, so it really turned it into a passion and a uh, little little side business as well so Really, the way I try to do it is try to set aside at least an hour every day to learn something, right? Whether it be read some documentation or watch a YouTube video or today, my my couple of hours is going to be messing around with virtual machines and getting familiar with Kali Linux. Some days it is fueled by like we're doing something at work and I'm not 100% confident on how to do something. So I'll go and I'll learn that. It's always funny because I, I feel like people expect like a a structure there and there's not one <laughs> i'm just kind of all over the place for me it's it's typically learning by building like i find something i want to make or, or like some sports team i was part of we want to have a website so let me build it and figure it out um another way i used to do it a lot is i would spend a lot of time just answering questions that i didn't know the answer to so i would sit down and google and figure it out and learn something along the way and then answer it and someone might correct me and i'll learn from that put stuff up at open source again like the feedback is really helpful and blog post and, and your code you learn a lot from other people using your code um, do you learn any microsoft tools that you use well vs code is the biggest one honestly mm -hmm. you know and it's funny because like i've tried to go and like 
try out Sublime or try out Atom and different editors. There's another one that I just recently started using. It's called Windows Terminal. I'm actually really into that because I can have several different, like you can open different tabs instead of opening different windows. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just using Visual Studio. Uh, most of the work I do, I do, so that's definitely my number one tool. I use VS Code a little bit for just some Arduino side projects, but it's, it's almost in solely Visual Studio. It was, I remember like I used to fly gliders in this big glider club and the instructors there were like, if you ever see anything before an airplane is about to launch, that looks weird. Even though you have no clue what you're talking about. You yell, stop, as loud as you can, because you might have spotted something that could be really bad. And if it's, it was just you didn't know what it was supposed to look like and it was actually fine, no harm. We'll just launch like 30 seconds later. So you only do that like a lot just day to day. Like if you think we might be going the wrong track or something, I, I have been fortunate enough for the most part that people were willing to listen and even argue that no, you're, you, that's not correct. You missed this. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I was wrong. But there's cases where we do catch something by that. Yeah, I've got one of my coworkers. He told me one time, he was like, you know, whenever you're working on a problem that you don't know the answer to, you owe it to yourself to go bang your head against the wall for 30 minutes trying to figure it out. After that, you owe it to the company to go ask somebody for help. The main way I stay kind of in tune with the rest of the deaf community is through Instagram. Uh, I've, oh. in the past year and a half, um, have gone from start to now to like, I think I checked it this morning, I have over 6,620 followers or something like oh. that, which is mind-blowing because half the time I don't feel like I really even talk about anything of value, especially like the way this community changes so quickly, right? Like new framework comes out and everybody jumps on board or, you know, some new language or some new something comes out and everybody's mm -hmm. scrambling trying to figure out what's going on. So that's honestly the way uh, social media, I think, is, yeah. is probably the best way. I figured it was just food pictures, but now I'm like curious because I haven't really done much Instagram. For me, it's mostly been, been Twitter. Of course, there's like various community calls where I would try to always join and, and participate in the chat there and, and ask questions. Um, and it's funny when I go to conference sometimes, like I don't know the people until they tell me their Twitter handles. Like, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> What's one dev trend that you're really excited about? I was going to say it's, it's definitely where .NET is currently headed. Um, with everything sort of really, I feel like it's really starting to come together, .NET 5, and especially for .NET 6, with a lot of the Windows-specific APIs that are kind of getting uh, pulled in, so it becomes really easy to write code against that. So I feel like the developer story towards the end of this year is really starting to look super strong. And this is less from a technical aspect, but the online meetup. So I think the fact that we have these online meetups now and that most of these tech meetups that are happening uh, are now offered online. I think mm -hmm. that really opens up the availability uh, to the world, really, right? So now anyone with a computer, like you don't have to have money for airplane ticket to go right. to Los Angeles, right? All you have to do is have a computer and an internet connection so that you can sign in and, and attend these meetups. I think that's I think that's game changing when it comes mm -hmm. to the generation coming up, right? That's starting to get ready to enter into industry. I've really enjoyed watching those live streams because it's not like a tailored presentation that we're already worked out all the kinks and it's just gonna go. Like what I like the most part is when they hit a problem that you didn't expect and then watch them like use the tools and the means and the documentation to figure out and then move on. Because I feel like I really learned a lot there because that's what we all sit with, like a problem we didn't expect and we have to figure out. And it's really interesting to see some of those people, like how they debug a problem or find the right documentation or there are some option in the debugging tools they didn't even know about that helps you figure these things out. Well, obviously myself, Dev. Of Weed. course. <laughs> a buddy of mine on Instagram, his Instagram tag is chow underscore codes, C-H-A-U underscore codes. Um, <clears throat> and he's on, I, he's on every social platform ever. So he's like Twitter, he's got YouTube. He's really solid into web development. So he's not really like into the DevOps stuff or, or any of that yet, I would say. Uh, one I really enjoy following is Ginny Coy, especially if you're a Windows developer. Um, she shares a lot of really good info. She will pretty much live tweet any event, pick out the really important parts. So if, if you're in, definitely into the Windows development area, that's a good account to follow. Well, yeah, thanks, Gordon. <laughs> it was great talking to you.
Yeah, I think it was really great to talk to you as well. Um, it's really interesting to hear like a sort of similar background um, and ending up sort of the same uh, place in the end. Um, that's really cool. Thank you very much for your time.